we have to understand is you cannot live a certain lifestyle without knowing and being cognizant that everything comes with a price. culture conversation and community and in today's video i am talking about yamla fix my life okay season seven episode seven home invasion horror story so if you're new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up okay and check out my other yamla videos period point blank i love yamla let's get into this review so Anne is um the older sister to shantara and they have a mother named annette Basically what happened was um, one of the cousins or it should, I think it was Shatara asked that they could have a birthday party at um, Anne's house and during the birthday party they were um, held hostage. There was a home invasion trying to do a robbery that went wrong and multiple, multiple people got shot and injured including the kids including them girl. It's crazy. We about to really dig deep and go into it this this review. So just to kick it off right we have an older sister named Anne, a mother named Annette and um, the younger sister Shantara. So these names girl these names Anna and Annette are fine. Shantara is just it's just a tongue twister for me. I'm so sorry. We might just call this girl Tara. So what happened was somebody had asked Anne could they host a kid's baby baby party birthday party at her house and she agreed. The home was shared by Shantara's sister Anne and her drug dealing boyfriend at which point the house was um evaded. They came in with guns a blazing and killed multiple people. Multiple people were injured and um it was a kid's birthday party girl when i say it got deep like it really went down in this home invasion so shantara got shot in the neck um her two children were both shot one has a one is missing a piece of their her scar the daughter name is shantaria and her son tony um was shot in the neck as well or something and he's missing an eye there was another cousin there carla and shaquan who both ended up dying because one of the cousins tried to shield her son and they both ended up dying and was injured she was shot in the neck and like it's just a very very um horrific story for real um honestly it's something that you would see in like power or something like that off the hook from just hearing the story i really wanted to know where they were from too that's not like a story coming out of chicago for real so after this home invasion happened they recently just went to trial 14 years later where they were both convicted or the the, the home invaders were convicted of like six consecutive life sentences or something along those lines but imagine all that time going by and they hadn't spoke about the tragedy um they tried to talk about it but what ends and you know arguments i mean understandably but they didn't really talk about it up until now to this point. Or should I say they want Miss Iyala to come and help fix their life because it's a lot. Shantara, which is the woman whose son was actually injured, admits that it's hard for her to watch her son get, you know, have to change his prosthetic eyes. She's still not over the fact that this is what's actually happened to her son. Um, and she breaks down crying because she's like, it's so hard for me to deal with that. And I can imagine, I mean, like having to see her son remove his eye and knowing that his eye is not there because of a situation at a birthday party. I mean, that would probably bring me back to the very moment, the very second, the very day that that tragedy happened. Yala and her props, girl, they got this little healing wheel, okay? And she, it spins around and on the wheel, it's guilt, shame, fear, a whole bunch of other things. And that is the activity and that is going to be the ongoing prop and theme throughout this episode. So Iyala and Anne have the one-on-one. -on -one. Anne is the woman whose home the, the baby party was supposed to be at. So Iyala says, Anne, now you got to keep it all the way real with me now. How is it that you were throwing a baby birthday party and your kids wasn't there? And she goes in to say one kid was with the dad, the other kid was away at school or something along those lines. But Yala says, but do you see how that could look? She's like, I, I'm fully aware of how that looks. Absolutely. Anne admits that she was a stripper for nine years and she was in this lifestyle. And, you know, she kind of got off track because her father went away when she was 16 years old. He went away for prison for drug dealing. In the process of this, it's also revealed that when Shantara came to the door with her two kids, they the, the people who were held, holding her hostage made Anne open the door and when she opened the door 
she told them to run. And she said she, all she knew was she was running and she remembered she looking back and nobody was behind her and they were shooting at her too. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. The cousins who were in the house actually ended up getting killed and I think this happened during the process of Anne trying to escape. I can't help but to think about like in the movies when people were like, oh, I would have done this and I would have done that. Like you don't really know what you're going to do until you're actually in that situation. And unfortunately, her fight or flight may have caused more death. So in the next scene, Iyanla and Annette sits down. Annette is the mother. And she's pretty much just like, so you knew this whole time you had a drug dealing baby daddy. And you let your daughters go ahead and do the same thing. And the mother, who seems to be a respectable Caribbean woman, was like, oh, yeah, but he was a construction worker and he did drug dealing on the side. And the young was like, yeah, but he didn't get locked up for doing, you know, construction. And mom, you know that. Like, come on, let's just take some accountability. You know that he didn't go away for three years or five years for laying uh, semen. Let's keep it real. Mom gives her reasoning as to why she decided to stay with the father or really it was a justification or an excuse. She said when I got with him I had a 10th grade education but when I got with him you know he had a couple extra dollars from the drug money I was able to elevate myself and put myself through nursing school. So when he actually got locked up mom was a nurse and she was like cool you know what I mean I was cool with that. He came home and she was supposed to get back with him and he was starting to, you know, deal again and she ended up leaving. And the kids never got the whole explanation, yada, yada, yada. Iyala and Shantar have their one-on-one -on -one and she is pretty much saying like, if something happens to me, who's going to take care of my kids? Which is a, you know, a valid concern. Like, it's one thing to have somebody take care of your kids when they don't really require much. But if they're, if they have these disabilities, like she's saying, I can see how that's an extra layer of stress added to her mom. So Iyana goes into like, well, you said your kids are disabled. What do you mean? They specifically talk about Tony. Well, he takes four medications in the morning. He's pretty high functioning, but I'm just so afraid that he has a seizure and he hits his head and nobody's there. And that's a real, real 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 thing I mean um if you've never been around anybody having a seizure or have epi or have epilepsy um and don't really know uh what the protocols are for somebody who has a seizure disorder girl like it's the scariest thing ever um especially if it's scary if you don't know what you're doing and you're there and it's also scary to have somebody alone that suffers from a seizure disorder that may bump it bump their head and they're dead or whatever the case may be so she has all of these long lasting effects from this one incident and <laughs> constant reminders every day when she looks at her child's prosthetic eye, maybe when he has a seizure episode, or maybe just in think or seeing other normal kids who didn't go through what her son went through. What's revealed in this one on one is that when she opened the door, she saw that Ann told her to run, they trying to rob us. Shatara ends up leaving her four-year-old child and her uh, and, the, and the little sister on the porch and ran with her sister okay and the kids got shot up and she ran and she's like the hardest part for me to deal with is the fact that like why did I run oh girl that's that's heavy because I mean like why would you run your kid you you're I'm imagining she's holding her kids hands waiting for the, her sister to come open the door and she just hauls off and leave them and, and again, you know, fight or flight, I, I don't know. I won't even put too many words on it because these are people's real lives and that is crazy. But really, y'all, both Ann and Shantara ran out the house or Shantara or Ann ran out the house rather and Shantara followed her, leaving the kids behind. Really. And Yana asked her, well, how did that happen? And she's like, I don't know. I'm just so used to following my sister. And I'm like, shit, that's, that's a different type of following that you just up and leave your kids in the middle of a home invasion? Girl. And Yala asked her if she knew that if, if you know, Ann's boyfriend was a drug dealer. She said, yeah, you know, Tony's Tony's dad is a drug dealer. And Yala poses the question, well, what if it was the other way around? What if you came over to her house and your baby dad, your drug dealing baby dad had a home invasion? You would feel the same way. And she kind of thought about it like, yeah, you right. But I feel like what she should have said was like, Look, sis, you know the risk. If you in this certain lifestyle dealing with a certain type of man, you know that it's going to come with certain cost, certain things that you may or may not want your kids around. You get what I'm saying? And quiet as it's kept, why you ain't want to have the house at your, the party at your house? They knew that she was, you know what I mean, um, 
her boyfriend was a drug dealer and and you can say oh he was a drug dealer but we all know like let's keep it real y'all we all know his levels to this drug game and he could be a low level tier ain't nobody doing a home invasion for no nickel and dime bags of some reggie you get what i'm saying he must have been a big time drug dealer and they was she was like oh i want to head up the party at my sister house because they live in lash you know what i mean like it's some other things that i feel like they could have really gotten into that they chose not to but i guess you know who why incriminate themselves why even dig you know dig so deep because ultimately it was about them being hurt in the way that they were and i don't want that to come off like i'm justifying what happened but honestly like you know, what, what is the saying? You lay down with pigs, you might get dirty. If you're dealing with a drug dealer, you might have to... I don't even want to say a drug dealer, <laughs> okay? Because like I said, if you hustling nickel bags, whatever. But if you're dealing with a big-time drug dealer, you know it's, it, it may... It may come with come with some extra stuff. And you got to ask yourself, am I ready to even deal with this lifestyle? For real. And then let alone have kids around? Come on now. But honestly, what was more surprising that came out of the one-on-one -on -one with Shantara and Iyanla is sh the sister feels like she wanted bloodshed. She felt like they were supposed to ride around on whoever shot up the party and, sh and she was supposed to get back at them. And I'm like, at least this is keeping it real. You know what I mean? The eye for her eye. She's like, listen, y'all killed up my folks. I want to, you know, I, I want revenge. She wanted to get back. So in the next scene, they have all of the ladies together and Iyanla brings out, you know, her wheel of emotions and the ladies kind of dig deep in this, in this segment of the show. When it was Anne's terms, it's when she wanted to explain her, you know, how does she feel about the street life? And she says, well, you know, I was stripping since I was 16 or whatever the case, however old she was. And maybe because I chose the street life, maybe that's why my life ended up the way that it did. I'm like, oh, well, good for you. Good reflection. Shantara says that she's a poor thinker and I'm like well that's very very lightly put because you got a poor thinker poor judgment um a whole bunch of stuff because this is the woman who left her kids on the porch mind you she also admit though and, and to her defense she was very vulnerable very honest listen I did if my sister did it I thought it was okay and she was my superhero for a very long time so if I saw my sister do it my big sister even if I felt like it was wrong um I wanted to do it anyway and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people feel that way. Um, I don't know to what degree shit, but um, that's a common train of thought. She did admit that she's upset that, you know, Anne's kids are still alive and well. You get what I'm saying? Anne's kids don't have a disability. She can go out partying and drinking and not have to worry about her son having a seizure. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, you know what I mean? She's in with two disabled kids now. So there's also resentment there as well. Anne answered, I can say, I wanted to be there, but you wouldn't allow me. And, and, uh, well, is, are, are the home invasion people, are they coming, are they following you, sis? Like, there's so many things that go into that. Chantara again just says, she just, she just doesn't understand why she ran. And I can only imagine as a mother um, what that may feel like if she left her kids there and they got shot in the neck and one has a prosthetic eye and the other has a missing skull, a missing piece of her skull. That is heavy to live with. And at the end of this, uh, at the end of that segment, it was also revealed that Anne ended up staying with that boyfriend that the, the home invaders were after. And nobody even mentioned that. I think I would have been more upset at that. Like, not even more upset, but equally upset. And then you have the nerve to stay with this man. Hmm. I would have to really sit with that. Well, Iyanla has a sit down with Tony. Tony is the nephew of Anne, the son of Shatara. And let me just say that he is such a charming, handsome young man. You can tell how he just presents on camera. Um, he's a very, very cute young man. He seems like he has a bright, bright future ahead of him. And um, he just pretty much just says, listen, I want to start a new chapter. But before starting the new chapter, he has to close the other one. He doesn't understand why he was shot at four. He just knows that it happened. Because they never had the conversation with this young man. He honestly says, I know that because you got shot at four, you are disabled. But do you consider yourself disabled? And he said no. And I can tell that, you know, in working with people with disabilities he's definitely a higher functioning child and you know your disability your disability is is not what defines you you know what I mean you define it because you can take that and spin it into something that may empower you if you have your mind on right and this kid really really is just like a beam of light he was just so it was such it was such a refreshing thing to watch and not because of his story well yeah because of his story but because of his 
his energy it was just right it was really really good to see i'm not even gonna lie he showed up ready to do more work than adults for real for real he also lets people know that you know he wants to go to seminary school he definitely seemed like he has a blessing over his life and what is that what is that good old christian statement it's the um i don't look like what i've been through he definitely don't and he definitely uh you know he has a testimony for sure yana sits down with ann and she asks her like sis like really what's up you know you got two dead cousins two disabled nieces and nephews your sister was shot in the neck really what's up and it evokes an emotion in her and she just says some days i really wish like it was me who died and i can only imagine living with that guilt you know what i'm saying and still trying to make amends with your sister and kids essentially you played a part in because it wasn't all of her responsibility right but oh girl it's just it's just deep they did have a breakthrough and you know how Iyana goes let it up give it a sound give it a voice Iyana looked good this episode too man she had on this nice white blazer with these flowy palazzo pants really really sharp this season girl y'all ain't missing a beat you hear me and in the breakthrough she's like you need to tell people how you feel and she's like they don't want to hear that from me and I can imagine people or her thinking that way like girl ain't nobody trying to hear your sob story my son is is missing an eye you get what I'm saying but I think it also like people want to know like how you truly feel about it. it it helps people process things better and I think Iyana is right I think she should tell her sister how she feels that way sometimes because what her sister is saying is girl you can go out to uh two dollar Tuesdays and not worry about no disabled kids and I can't so being vulnerable in that way and opening those lines of communication can possibly um start to rekindle their you know friendship and their sisterhood so Shantara and Iyanla have a sit down and she's like listen your mom didn't keep it real your dad was a drug dealer she normalized the lifestyle your sister was a stripper she was into the lifestyle and you your, your baby dad was a drug dealer so y'all all normalized this that's not okay Shantara admits that yeah I think my dad played a role in my life uh, you think but in this moment Iyanla said you have to take some responsibility in this in this part because you took your child there you she was like did you know it was a hot spot and she was like yeah and you decided to take your child over there and she was like yeah so with that being the case where where is your accountability in all this you get what i'm saying you can't say oh i took my kid to um the trampoline park and they jumped all day of course you know what i'm saying like that's what happens at a trampoline park you and, and, and unfortunately you don't know when the shoe was going to drop you don't know when it's going to happen but you know that it's a possibility that it may and with knowing that information you need to make decisions that serve you and your family period so it was nice for her to show some accountability for that as hard as it may be because it's easy to blame the other person you were supposed to protect me like how was she supposed to know her nigga was in a drug war or was you know he was about to come and, and do a home invasion nobody knows that and even if he was even if the man was home he wouldn't have known that you know what i'm saying it's not like that's information you're made privy to like so girl listen this is why everything comes with a price that's what i'll say oh so, iyana sits all of the women down and shantara and hug it out they did this the beautiful they had this beautiful beautiful moment oh my gosh it brought me to tears to hear that pain and that grief come up from those sisters because of what a traumatic horrific tragedy that took place in their lives but the love is really real there and i could tell before this incident occurred they had a real tight close relationship and to see that being broke down because of gun violence and um poor decisions and a whole gambit of other things is just so unfortunate but she did tell shantara did tell and listen sister i take responsibility i take the charge of showing up with my kids knowing that you know you was living the lifestyle you was living i was putting all of that onto you but at some point i need to take responsibility for that too and oh girl that that apology was so for real and so heartfelt and it's unrelated to anything i've ever been through in my life but the sincerity and the honesty that i got from that moment like you know people first of all hate apologizing for leaving the toilet seat up okay so to apologize for something so deep like that and the way that she did man that is that's something that's tv okay in the final segment yana brings tony 
um, to join the other women, which are his aunt and his grandma and his mother. And grandma kicks it off just pretty much telling Tony, like, I set the tone. And I set a, a bad tone because your grandpa was a drug dealer. And I made it okay to my daughters. In which case, you know, they started dealing with men who resembled him. Grandma takes responsibility for the systematic, for the lineage, the era in the lineage, okay? And that's another hard thing that most people will never do in their lifetime. And, um, and Yana, man, she's making, she's forcing, not even forcing, she's challenging people to do the work for real. And I hope that people that are watching this can take something in their own lives because I know that even if the situation doesn't translate to something specific to me, it's always a nugget in there that something, a jewel or a gem that you can take and pay it forward to somebody else or even to yourself, girl. The mom tells Tony, listen, Tony, I chose men that resembled my father. And because of that, you know, your father's a drug dealer. And Tony pretty much gets emotional. He's like, I wasn't even aware of that. And one thing about it, though, you know, them kids are not aware. That lets me know that their parenting style is okay because if you know anything about it, if, if your mom is in the lifestyle, that child is going to grow up seeing a whole bunch of stuff he don't need to see or she don't need to see or that he or she does not need to be around. So the fact that they kept it separate from the children speaks a little bit to me. You know, get a little bit of kudos. Damn. And tells Tony, listen, I caused Carla's death. I caused Shaquan's death. I caused you to have a prosthetic eye. I caused you to lose your eye. She, she also lets him know that she often thinks about how his life would have been if this had not have happened to him. And um, that's such a sad thing. The, the young man took the information really, really well. Like I said, he was such a beam of light. And it was good for him to get that closure and to get that honesty. After they got the full story, they said that they're going to get him separate counseling. Because that, that man hasn't even had counseling for it. He breaks down. He's like, y'all don't know how hard I'm hurting. And he was doing like this. When you're doing your hand like this, you know you hurt. She was like, I hurt every day. People make fun of me. People bully me. You know what I'm saying? And I try not to say nothing. I try to just keep it all in. But I'm hurting. I'm hurting. And I felt him like, oh my gosh. Like somebody go and hug this child. Like, oh, if if, if that young man had a GoFundMe, um, any type of crowd sharing thing, I would donate my little couple coins because he was just that moving to me um for his vulnerability his awareness man it was just it was just uh, really really touching tony if you ever see this video sir i'm wishing you all the best in life and you are such a star and such a special special person in this world for real and to close it off tony who um wants to go to seminary school iyana asked him to do like a closing prayer he closed it out and it was just such a good 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 fulfilling episode horrific terrible to even think about but you know they showed up ready to do the work and i've seen people on yana that have far less far less traumatic issues than that not judging but y'all get what i'm saying and showed up like hmm, i ain't doing nothing and those people really worked it out and that just goes to show you it works if you work it you know what i mean if you want to be healed and you have willing participants it can happen and um let me know what y'all think. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Share if you care. I really appreciate it. And like I said, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Check out my other Iyanla reviews. I will link that at the top if you're interested. Anyways, y'all, I'm so here for this season of Iyanla. Um, she's really been giving me some moving content, girl. The content I love to see. Um, as always, I'm sending you much love and much light. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.